This video is made possible by our sponsors, AJA. We'd like to thank AJA for all their support and tell you to go to AJA.com for all your production and post-production needs. Hi, I'm Gordon Burkell from Filmic U. At Filmic U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at FilmicU.com. Of course, follow us on Instagram at Filmic underscore U. Every week, we interview a film uh, professional to discuss their work. And this week, I'm joined by editor uh, Fady Jeanbart, uh, whose work includes Red, Studio City, and more recently, To Tell Death Do Us Part, just to name a few. Welcome to the show. Hi, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I guess I do want to start with your short, uh, Red, that was, you directed it, um, and it went off to Cannes and what have you. So uh, I guess give us a bit of background about that, but also, um, you know, like, what are some of the challenges that you face directing and basically what a lot of people do with their shorts, doing everything? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So my short, the Red, was my thesis, actually. Um um was my last my last project when I was a student and it was experimental. Uh six minutes, six, seven minutes, something like this. And I was the editor, the director, and I wrote it and everything, like you said. Um uh, I was surprised it went to a lot of festivals, it went to Camp Film Festival, short corner, uh 2018 or 19, something like this, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. And uh a lot of people liked it and it went to a lot of platforms as a short, which is very rare, you know, a short film. And from there, a lot of people like, okay, you know what? I want to work with you in this. I want to work with you in this. So it was like very quick. <laughs> yeah. So now, how did you make the leap from that uh, to Till Death Do Us Part? From the Red? No, it's from Studio City. So yeah. what happened is um, on Studio City, um, I know the producer, Michelle Cannon, mm -hmm. uh, she, they wanted a DIT on set. And I was the DIT. And then the the, the director, Timothy Woodward Jr., was like, hey, why not to like just have a look in the ep episode one and like try to uh, have an assembly for me? Mm -hmm. And I did an assembly, and actually it was not assembly. I did like a first cut, a first draft, and he mm -hmm. really liked it. So from there, I became the editor of City City for season one and season two, and we got a bunch of Emmys on season one, uh, and I got the recognition from 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 City City, recognition from the Emmys, uh, my membership from the Emmys and everything uh, from Study City. And then after this, Timothy Woodward Jr., the same same director, he was directing Till Death Do Sport, and he called me. He wanted me to be the editor for this film. So, yeah. So, when you're working uh, with this director, how did you work to get on the same page? You had that relationship in Studio City. Yeah, we did. <laughs> for like months, we were like together every day. Mm -hmm. We were like eight to ten hours every day. So, of course, like we knew each other a lot. <laughs> Yeah. And we became friends, literally. And uh, he's he's a very good mentor for me too. So I, I can I can give him this credit on one hundred percent. And uh, he was like I would say like I was learning from him a lot. He was learning from me too. So it's like it was very good combination, very good uh, collaboration between us as a director and editor. And same same thing also because I started filmmaking, so mm -hmm. I know storytelling. So it's not only editing, it's also storytelling. So it's like everything together. So we 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 did a very good like team. It's it's team, team effort more than director and editor. It's like friendship, partnership. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what would you say were some of the challenges of Till Death Do Us Part that you faced? The time. <laughs> uh, we were we were very uh we had very hard like deadline. Uh How short was that... the, the runway for you. We needed to do it like in four months mm -hmm. and four months. Yeah. Like quick. And it's action, some horror, some comedy. It's like a lot of genre in one thing. And uh, the action scenes, one of the, one of the challenges were um, I didn't want to be like, um, I didn't want to like add the dialogues and everything, but I wanted to add more with music. So what I did is I edited it as if it's music video. Uh, to make it faster, to make it like, okay, because we have this action, and then after the action, we have some comedy, and after this comedy, we have some horror. And to put the sequence together, I know the script is with us, but of course, you you will rewrite the script in the post-production anyways. So we did rewrite the script in post-production. So it was very hard to do. put this, this, this. It's like a puzzle. 
you know, to make sure that it, it works in the end for the audience, you know? Yeah. Sorry. So Sorry. what were some of the changes in post-production uh, to the story? Some scenes went like from the middle, went to the end, <laughs> and the end went to the middle, these kind of things. And yeah. because the thing is like, till the sport, especially this kind of movie, you want to balance. You don't want like, oh yeah, it's only action. Oh yeah, it's only horror. Oh yeah, no, it's not. It's like, a lot, it's a lot of box. It's, it doesn't fit one box, if mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So we needed to have the balance between this and that, you know. I got into sound designing at a point when things were just developing. I was really fascinated by the idea that dialogue, effects, music were all components of the soundtrack to a film, which had never occurred to me before. What gets me excited is coming up with sound ideas that do match picture, but also is not just the equivalent of what you're seeing on screen. I'm Eugene Garrity, and this is my course on sound design. So now uh, there's a lot of fight scenes in this. So uh, how did you, you know, we have a lot of young uh, film editors and filmmakers. How do, what would be your advice for tackling fight scenes? I would say don't listen to the dialogue because the dialogue will really let you off <laughs> from it. Uh, just open like a music or something. Do it like the Michael Bay way. Michael Bay he, I think he's always like doing it like this, like with music mm -hmm. and just mute all the dialogue or anything. Of course, sync everything, but just mute all the dialogue and then put a music and work on it. Play it as a music video. You will, you will feel better. You will feel, and of course, after this, you will add like sound effects and this kind of things. So it will give you like, oh yeah, I like this knife thing. I like this gun thing, you know, these kind of things. Yeah. So, so music, I think is one of the most important in fighting. It's like dancing. It's like you're dancing, literally. Yeah. Now, what about like the geography? How did you keep people oriented uh, when watching like a fight scene? Well, it's another, <laughs> this is another challenge in the action. Uh, but this is more because we had um, a professional stunt coordinator on set too. So he was making it very easy for me in the editing room. Uh, I knew already what part part of it also like I went to I went on set to until that was part so I, so I was looking I was seeing everything I was writing my notes with the scripty and everything I was with the director all the time so I made sure like oh yeah we got this we got this I will cut it from here I will cut it from here so this has helped me a lot it's not all all the cases will be like you the editor will be on set but it helped yeah I would say yeah now do you think they'll make a sequel to this are they gonna she well, while while, <laughs> while we while we were editing, actually, uh, Timothy was um, telling uh, one of the distributor about a sequel for it, and mm -hmm. he has the he had a very cool idea. I cannot say it, of course, but he has a very cool idea to continue it. I don't know if they would do it. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so from an like, and you kind of you mentioned this before. It's like a rewrite. When you get into the edit suite of course yeah so where when you're tackling a scene or a, a moment where do you think the script ends and the edit begins like where do you feel that you can start to manipulate parts or where you have to sort of stick to the script i would say uh, i don't really stick to the script i stick to whatever makes sense whatever the story makes sense uh, i'm not saying like the script doesn't make sense but sometimes while the writer is writing a script, he doesn't think about, oh, maybe this cut will not work because it's out of focus. Maybe this cut will not work because it's the visual were bad or something. Maybe this cut mm -hmm. will not work because of performance. So I need to manipulate. I need to change some stuff. I need to add more uh, um, uh, inserts, for example, to just get away from, I would say, uh, not bad. Uh, not good performance, uh, not good camera angles or these kind of things, mm -hmm. because it happens all the way, all the time. And you need to manipulate. So I would say from day one, you're thinking like this because you don't want to waste time too. You just like, it's not only the script, you read the script, you read the reports, you, re you read all the scripty uh, logs and everything. But at the end of the day, it's you. 
it's your name it's with the director of course but like yeah. how i work for example i work i have the first cut it's my cut editing cut and then we have a cut between me and the director and then the third cut is the director's cut his vision with me so yeah mm -hmm. interesting now um what would you say was your favorite scene or the most fun scene to cut i would say um I don't know if you watched the movie or no, but I would yeah, say yeah. The, the you did. Okay, um, the scene when she was fight the the bride was fighting uh, the groom, the end, the yeah. almost the end. Yeah, this was one of my favorite actually. And, oh yeah, uh, what was it about it that? I don't know. I I mean I remember I cut it in like five hours. <laughs> I remember uh -huh. this only five hours. Yeah, and it's action, so it's like it was insane. Uh, but same time I did put a music and. I think we got the same music that I put in the first cut. We got it. We got all the license and everything from this music. And it was very like, oh yeah, the first time I cut it in this, in this, you know, because sometimes you put like temp music and these yeah. kind of things. And after this, you change it. But this specific scene, we didn't change the music. So it was special for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you, when you get the footage, like how do you like to assess the, rush, the rushes and, and sort of figure out which part or which one to choose? Well, for me, first of all, like I'm, I'm cleaning the house, of course. I'm organizing everything, um, the normal, basic. And then I watch every single every single uh, shot. I really watch it. And I write my notes. Like this cut can work, this cut cannot work, this shot, blah, 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 this kind. And I write my notes on the notes of the script. So I always do this. While like I'm transcoding or something like this, I always watch all the shots. And then after this, my cleaning <laughs> mind, I put one timeline, I put like, for example, white shots, like the shots that they are beautiful or like they are like masters big. I put it in one timeline. So I make sure I have them so I can like, it's, it's my safety shots, I would say. And then I go to the, to the medium close up and I put them together and then I begin. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Now, um, I have one last question for you. What would you say is your favorite Guilty Pleasure film or TV show to watch? Uh, I would say it's it's very hard to say it. I have a lot of <laughs> favorites. Uh, but like, I would say like recent, if yeah. you want recent. Yeah. I love I love uh, um, Ted Lasso, for example. Oh, Ted Lasso Ted is, Lasso, one of, yeah. is one of my favorite and because I'm a soccer fan too. Oh, so yeah. this was who's, like... Who's your team? I'm Manchester United. <laughs> Oh, okay okay unfortunately uh, yeah i well I, i'm not a huge soccer fan but i support okay. my friend's team and he's liverpool so <laughs> okay know. it's done yeah, yeah. sorry man yeah, but yeah. again i don't I know mean, much i just go because you need someone to watch the show with him it's actually things. very interesting because a lot of friends are uh liverpool fans because also i'm egyptian and yeah. the most famous player in liverpool is mo salah so he's egyptian too so it's like it's crazy and how how come you're not supporting your Egyptian play? It's like this. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Um, Ted Lasso, I would say, I would say I love um um uh what's it called? Uh, yeah. The Last of Us. Yeah, I love The Last of Us, and I love the game too, so that's why I'm like, this is yeah, it's a great very game. important for me. Uh but films, I would say recent. Um I don't have anything in mind, but I would say. Maybe not recent, maybe something that <laughs> I really like, uh, yeah. who really made me like enter this industry actually was uh, um, Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg. That's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, Steven Spielberg's my favorite director. He's it's, the one who like it, made me love this. It's crazy to re, so like, because you watch all the new ones and you're like, oh yeah, that was fun, it was good. And then you go rewatch the original and you're like, oh, that's amazing. Oh yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and, and, and especially Spielberg, like Munich, for example, the movie Munich is one of my favorite too. It's like Schindler's List is one of all. It's it's yeah. crazy. Well, he was this doing Jurassic is... Park and Schindler's List at the same time. Which is crazy. I think so, yeah, because 1993 and the other one, 1994, yeah. something like this. It's crazy. I don't know how he did this, and he got an Oscar for Schindler's List. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. He's he's one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for letting me interview you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. And that's it for this week, everyone. Make sure to check us out at filmmakeru.com or of course on Instagram at filmmaker underscore you. I'm Gordon Burkell. Thanks for watching.
This video is made possible by our sponsors, AJA. We'd like to thank AJA for all their support and tell you to go to AJA.com for all your production and post-production needs.